Duty ships with a traditional campaign and multiplayer, but then a dedicated third mode that differs between the two. Today, we will be going through every third mode in Call of Duty. While some are very well known, others downright awful, and some completely forgotten or overlooked, we have a lot to go through. Go ahead and comment your favorite third mode as we get started. This was the first and probably the most iconic third mode in Call of Duty. Zombies was initially an afterthought for World at War and was a side project that was being worked on by a small group of developers. It was then added to the game very last second, and I genuinely don't think they were aware of what beast they were creating when zombies shipped alongside World at War. There was no advertising about the zombies mode, so when you beat the campaign and were immediately put into a spooky cutscene with a zombie charging your player, it was a shock for most people. As time went on, with each Treyarch installment of Call of Duty, zombies would be the go-to third mode and has seen a ton of evolution and maybe some de-evolution along the way. Zombies has come a long way and created a new genre of player who only plays this mode. There are countless dedicated zombies YouTubers out there with a massive following and that's because the zombies community is huge. And if you don't believe me, just hop on Black Ops 3 Steam and check out the community workshop. Literally endless custom zombies content crafted by the community themselves. Known for its extremely in-depth easter eggs and really good storytelling that is just all over the place in the best way possible, Zombies has one of, if not the most beautiful thing that Call of Duty has ever introduced. There are some other zombie spin-offs that we'll talk about later, but Treyarch is without a doubt the one that comes to mind when you hear the word Call of Duty zombies. They always seem to get it right for the most part. However, with Black Ops 6 zombies, there's a lot of controversy and mixed opinions that I'm also weary of. MW2 is a near perfect installment for the franchise with an awesome campaign and one of the most beloved multiplayers. However, there's a third mode that gets overlooked and that's Spec Ops. Spec Ops was pretty much a co-op campaign with elements and settings of the single player, but now playable alongside a friend. These were a lot of fun and gave you another thing to grind since you had a rating for each map up to three stars if you played on the maximum difficulty. Now these missions were actually pretty in depth, maybe not like as detailed as a standard campaign mission, but still had a lot of stuff going on. A fun snowmobile chase, an all gillied up respectable knockoff, and several survival missions, these were just all really fun. Not to mention, they were also very abundant. With over 20 different missions to play, this is a game mode that gets overshadowed by what the rest of the game has to offer, which is a lot. This mode would return to Modern Warfare 3 that I thought was also a smash hit, but once again was overshadowed by what else this game has to offer, including yet another third one in this game that we'll talk about next. But Spec Ops and MW3 was also abundant, and even came with some more missions with each DLC as well, which I thought was a nice plus. I think this one even had a mission where one person was in an AC-130 and the other was on foot, which is really cool. And Spec Ops would return one last time, and that was with Modern Warfare 22, and it just might be the most forgettable experience and tarnish the whole entire Spec Ops name. As I just stated, MW3 sort of had four modes to choose from, and that fourth mode I guess we'll call it was Survival. Survival was a pretty decent attempt at a zombies clone that was playable on any multiplayer map. Each map had upgrade stations that you could unlock that would give you things like guns, ammo, kill streaks, perks, and even friendly AI to help you. This mode would get pretty difficult in the later rounds where you would not only fight more enemies, but also juggernauts, helicopters, dogs, and more difficult AI in general. It also had a lot of replay value since this was playable on any multiplayer map. A lot of people would try and make it to wave 30 on every single map as like a challenge. Survival came back in Modern Warfare 19, which I bet a lot of you didn't know about, and that's because one, it wasn't near as good, two, it was only playable on a few maps, and three, and most notably, it was exclusive to PS4 for an entire year, which looking back was maybe one of the worst decisions you could possibly make when regarding a third mode. To put in perspective, Modern Warfare 19 survival mode was added less than a month before the release of Cold War. And me being a PC player, I never played it, nor did I have any desire to go back and play the previous year's installment. Just a total L on MW19. Extinction is probably the most underrated entry on this list. Instead of a wave-based like survival mode, COD Ghost gave us Extinction. This was kind of like a Spec Ops and Zombies mixed into one experience. Taking an alien invasion campaign like Saga that had up to four players, these were like longer campaign missions that had objectives complete with several types of aliens and even some intense boss fights as well. It was really in-depth with full-blown cutscenes and an overarching story that was actually pretty compelling. This was also in a very overlooked game being COD Ghost, so I wouldn't be surprised if you forgot about this mode or never played it to begin with. I actually have an entire video breaking down how COD Ghost was a misunderstood game, so if that sounds interesting, maybe watch that after this video. That being said, in an overlooked COD game, it's no surprise that Extinction is an overlooked third mode. This mode deserved way better. 
Now, I'm not going to sit here and act like I played a lot of Exo Zombies or even gave this mode much of a chance, but I could not stand this version of Zombies. The biggest reason for that was the Exo movement existing in the Zombies mode, whereas in Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare, which are both jetpack movement games, they kept the movement separate from the Zombies. Aside from the movement, everything about this mode just screamed like Timu ripoff. Every single name of the power-ups, perks, or whatever other Zombies elements they were borrowing were just not the original name to like not interfere with a traditional Zombies IP, I guess. I don't really understand why they had to do that. There was also that one annoying zombie that kicked off your exo movement, which was essential for this game mode as well. Overall, I would have loved to see some type of extinction sequel by Sledgehammer instead of a knockoff zombie spinoff from Advanced Warfare. I never plan on playing Advanced Warfare ever again, and I especially don't plan on ever touching exo zombies again. Black Ops 6 is finally here, or about to be here if you're watching this the day this is uploaded, and I'm happy to announce that I'm hosting a free 4v4 tournament for Black Ops 6 this weekend. Registration is open and all you need to do is join my Discord and fill out the information, and like I said, this is free, all you need is 4 people and then just to sign up. More information on how to register is down below and I would love to see you guys there. And if you don't want to play and just want to watch, I'll be streaming the whole thing, and I'll be participating in it, so it should be pretty fun. I mean, like I said, there's literally nothing to lose, it is 100% free, there's no like catch to it whatsoever. But regardless, you should join my Discord anyways. Wasn't sure where to put this mode or if it even deserved a spot on this list, but Black Ops 3 gave us the jetpack movement, which is a good bit different than the EXO movement we had the previous year, but alongside the campaign, multiplayer, and zombies, we were given free run. These were just like mini obstacle courses that acted as time trials to not only let you get used to the jetpack movement, but also try and set personal records on each level. Just figured it was worth a mention since it's technically like its own separate mode. Of all the zombie spinoffs, this is hands down the best one and it is not even close. Although I will say that Zombies in Spaceland absolutely carries not only the zombies mode, but I would argue Infinite Warfare as a whole. This is way more than a decent zombies experience if you're feeling burnt out of the Treyarch games. IW Zombies finds a way to stay true to the original zombies formula while still feeling like its own separate entity. Obviously, characters and settings are a big way to stand out, but the overall feel of the game is different enough for me. Each map is more of a casual and like relatable setting that makes you feel like you're watching zombies land but in a video game. We still have stupid knockoff names of perks and other items but Infinite Warfare Zombies is a great experience that is also a very thorough easter egg across every map that feels gratifying. Director's Cut also made this zombies mode way more replayable. Similar to Exo Zombies, I didn't play much of World War II Zombies, so I don't really have much to say about it. The only thing that I really remember that made it stand out was that it was definitely a much darker approach to the game mode. Very similar to like World at War Zombies, but even more edgier. I didn't really enjoy it, but I also didn't give it much of a chance, so please give me your thoughts on World War II Zombies down below. Black Ops 4 didn't ship with the campaign, so in place of that, we got Blackout. Blackout was Call of Duty's first attempt at a battle royale, since this was all the rage back then, but fell short of all the competition out there. Blackout wasn't bad, per se, I just think it was going through an identity crisis. Since this was in a game with specialists, it felt like a hero shooter battle royale, but also not at the same time. Like, it didn't really marry into the whole hero shooter, but still had the elements of one. Had it been given a little more time and dedication, I think it could have had a better and longer lifespan, but was eventually eclipsed by the next next entry on this list. Maybe if it had gone free to play at launch, Blackout could have seen more time in the sun, but unfortunately one of the biggest elements against it was the fact that it was being played on Black Ops 4's engine, which I don't think fit the battle royale playstyle. We eventually got the Alcatraz map, which has now been reworked as Rebirth Island in Warzone today, and that was actually a very fun era of Blackout. I've said it in a video before, Blackout walked so that Warzone could run. If you're a returning viewer, you would know that this channel is primarily Warzone, so this next one hits extra hard for me. Some four or so months after the launch of Modern Warfare 19, we got Warzone. Warzone, unlike Blackout, was a free-to-play battle royale that seriously couldn't have picked a better time to be released. Just mere days before the lockdown era of the pandemic, Warzone quickly took the world by storm with how it found a nice middle ground between arcade shooter and tactical battle royale. And this is what I love about Warzone. With over four years of live service, we've seen a lot of ups and downs with the game. Emphasis on the downs in the more recent years, but this last year of Warzone has pumped some hope into Warzone's future and people are pretty excited about the Black Ops 6 integration. Some people argue Warzone and the live service model have ruined Call of Duty, and I do see an argument for that and I'm really not sure. In one way or another, COD has without a doubt been neglected because of the success of Warzone, but I'd love to know your all's opinion on that. I could write a book for this entry alone, but I've got plenty of Warzone content on this channel, so if you want to take a look at a more in-depth look at Warzone's history, I'm sure there's a video on my channel that would help you out with that. 
This is another game mode. I wasn't really sure if it deserved a spot on this list or not, but Outbreak was a Treyarch Zombies mode that came post-launch to Cold War. It was an open world style zombies mode that was complete with Easter eggs, challenges, boss fights, and even vehicles. I played a good bit of this mode, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it's bad or good. I definitely didn't like really enjoy it and much prefer the traditional round based style of zombies like I'm sure a lot of you out there would agree with. I just want to know who on earth was asking for an open world zombies experience. Vanguard Zombies is neck and neck with Exo Zombies when it comes to the worst non Treyarch Zombie spin off, tweaking the formula a good bit in a way that it was pretty much now turned into a roguelike. This was basically accept certain challenge, level up and upgrade your gear, rinse and repeat, and absolutely nothing else to it. This resulted in extremely stale and boring gameplay with no satisfaction involved. We eventually got around base maps later, but they were still also just bad and also a remake of Shino Numa, which, like, again, who is asking for that? But I will never load up Vanguard Zombies because this is one of the worst attempts to a Call of Duty roguelike. This is one of the more misunderstood modes added into Call of Duty. I mean that in the way that an extraction shooter is simply not the kind of game mode most Call of Duty players want to play. However, that doesn't mean that DMZ is a bad game mode whatsoever. Taking place on Warzone 2's launch map Almazra until later in its life cycle, DMZ did a pretty good job emulating Escape from Tarkov and other extraction shooters. But since this wasn't exactly the right demographic, the post-launch support wasn't the best. Although still giving DMZ players new content nearly every update, there has officially been no more live service updates for DMZ since Modern Warfare 23. Pretty sure this game still has a decent cult following, so if you're still playing DMZ, I'm honestly so happy for you. We'll end this video on one last very disappointing zombie spin-off, and that is the Modern Warfare Zombies. With a similar approach that Outbreak had, this is an open world zombies with little DMZ sprinkled in as well. Just like with Outbreak, all I have to say is who on earth was asking for this? Another question is did you not learn anything from Outbreak? I know some people swear up and down that this is a decent zombies mode, and I will say the camo grind for Modern Warfare Zombies was a nice addition, but I just don't know why they wouldn't go for the round based approach. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Modern Warfare Zombies probably had less post-launch content than DMZ and was a completely neglected mode that has no reason to exist in the first place. I will say the boss fights and easter eggs did look pretty cool, but once again, this was well after the game mode had been dead, so I don't even know why you come back to this. Black Ops 6 Zombies, please revive the franchise. But that is every third mode in Call of Duty history. Let me know if you think there's something that should be on this list. I personally think I got just about everything. If you want to hear the best thing about every Call of Duty or the entire history of the nuke streak, click on screen now. Join my Discord if you're feeling crazy. And if you liked, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And thank you so much for watching.